action. <laughs> so we have multiple new toys. In addition to, I'm gonna give that to, to you. In addition, well look at you all framed and clear. Look at that. <laughs> so this is our real new toy. The other one is just for fun. I'm gonna let you talk about it because it was your idea. It was my idea. So it's a, it's a, it's called the Print Perfect Gel Plate Registration Tool. I think that sounds right. I think that sounds right. So what's cool about it is it is the same uh, depth as the gel plate, the height as the gel plate, and it is uh, laser cut uh, with uh, intense accuracy. Like it's exactly eight by 10 opening for exactly the eight by 10 gel plate. And it allows us to align and register the prints perfectly. It's a print perfect tool or it's the acrylic thingy, which is what we called it for months when we were trying to figure it out. Right, this is true. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they are laser cutting these at Joggles in Rhode Island. They are. Uh, they are. Annie. Annie is. <laughs> Annie is. Uh, we're not doing anything. We're here. But they are being cut by Annie on the laser at Joggles in Rhode Island. And it's super exciting because it is a brand new product and being manufactured by you. And well, and so Elizabeth, we talk all the time. Sometimes it's nine miles an hour in a text. Sometimes it's 150 miles an hour on the phone. And we went around and around and we she asked, is there a way that we can create some sort of a tool that would allow us to really accurately register when you're making prints? And we talked and we talked and we talked and eventually we realized that we can buy acrylic, it's three eighths of an inch thick, which is what the, thick, the thickness of the plate is. And by the time you get through lining it up, you have one smooth piece and you use a little bit of tape, you hinge some paper and the next thing you know, Show them. You have, oh, yeah. you have fabulous prints that look like this. So multiple layers, but lined up on the edge. So all aligned in exactly the same place. But this is like what three or four layers? I think it's three layers. Uh, yeah, at least yeah, three it's, layers. It's at least three. Yeah. Yeah. So and now you have a frameable print. Your mother, she signed and dated that. I did. I signed them because I was feeling so fancy. So. Elizabeth has the ability to be incredibly precise. Not so much for me. What I'm going to show you is that when I print, I generally don't clean my plate. So there's artifacts and grunge that hangs out. And sometimes you get, oops, sometimes you get edges that kind of look like this. And I'm okay with that. But what you get when you use this tool is the design in this case this is elizabeth's this is your cubes stencil nope this, sorry this is mirror mirror what you get is a little hard because of the shine you get that print that stencil design or mask design aligned right on the background you don't have to monkey with the paper because the hinging that you do on that print perfect gel registration tool is going to take care of that for you so elizabeth's going to show you how to do perfectly beautiful, perfect prints. And I'm gonna show you something a little bit less perfect and grungy. Imperfect prints. Perfectly imperfect. I'm really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, let's go. So, okay, so the acrylic thingy, <laughs> <laughs> we which- We spent months calling it the acrylic thingy. Well, it was a prototype for months while we were working out the size and the shipping and all the details of it. We called it the acrylic thingy, but it is officially called the Print Perfect Gel Plate Registration Tool. And it is manufactured by the fine folks at Joggles in Rhode Island. And uh, which I think is fantastic because, you know, we're fellow New Englanders. That's right. Right? Yes, we have that in common. We do. So we have a pretty brand new 8x10 gel press plate. The registration tool is exactly the same height as the plate and the opening is exactly the eight by 10. So we're going to, like we it's almost like you did it on purpose and it's, it's accurate. This is laser cut. So it is accurate, like to down to zero. It just fits perfectly right in there. Same height. What we're going to do is we're going to hinge a piece of my favorite rice paper, the 9 by 12 Yasutomo sketch paper pad. And we're going to hinge that. And what I mean by that is we're going to tape it to the registration tool so that we can lift it and lower it and always have it be in the same place. We're going to use the smooth side of the paper down on the plate. So we're going to sort of center this. 
And we're gonna use some Scotch Delicate Washi Painters Tape to adhere the paper to the acrylic. I found that the blue painter's tape was still too sticky. The other thing you can do to make this less sticky is to press it to, to some fabric first and then pull it off. And that takes away a little bit of the tack. That's a trick. I didn't tell you that. You did not. No, you didn't share that. But it is a tack trick. A tacked trick. Yes. So now we're hinged. And that means that every layer of print that I put down will always be in alignment because we're going to be coming from exactly the same place. It's going to give me an edge that lines up. So I am making a frameable piece of artwork and all of my layers are going to line along the edge. So... The first uh, color that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use three different colors here. I'm going to use Naples yellow, then I'm going to use raw umber, and lastly, I'm going to use, it's so hard to read these things, Prussian, Prussian, blue? Prussian blue. Yeah. Okay. We got some uh, leafy things, greenery at Trader Joe's yesterday. You can buy them at the grocery store, get them from FTD, pick them on a walk, steal them from your neighbor. All of the above. All of the above, yeah. However you need to get greenery, depending on what season it is by you. But this came from Trader Joe's. And what I was looking for when I chose this greenery was a contrast of shapes. So the eucalyptus is nice and round and um, sort of wide shapes and then whatever this stuff is uh is long and skinny and pointy so some contrast of shapes makes for visual interest so the first layer i'm going to use the eucalyptus with this lovely naples yellow now this is an opaque color so it's good to use on the bottom because it will not obliterate your subsequent layers we're using translucent paint on the subsequent layers so we can see through each layer like stained glass. So I'm gonna spread this out. The key to not getting lines at the edges of your brayers is not to press too hard. Don't apply too much pressure. You just really need to spread the paint. You don't have to press down. So a light motion. Oh my goodness, this squeaky brayer, Barb. I know. We need some WD-40. Well, we're going out for dinner very soon so we can maybe stop at Home Depot and get some. There we go. Okay, so a nice light layer of that, and then I'm going to take a wet paper towel and just clean up any over paint, and then I'm going to take my eucalyptus leaves, and I'm going to run them down one side here, so I'm going to sort of angle them on this side compositionally, leaving myself a little bit of room. Oh my goodness, look at that, Barb, I messed it up already. I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put that down, bring the paper over the top and press, smooth it out. And we're trying to get some nice detail in here. So you have to apply a little bit more pressure with your fingertips. And I like to put my fingers together like this and trace along the stem. We wanna make sure we get some good detail in there. And that's where this rice paper really shines because it's very malleable, it's flexible, it's gonna press down into those open spaces. And even though this is a 3D object, we're gonna get good contact of the paper to the plate. It always amazes me how precise that paper can be. Oh Especially yeah. Especially when, when you're gonna print the, the vein pattern, the, the amount of detail in it, I mean, the paper is super smooth, but the amount of detail that it picks up off that plate is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's that smooth side. And thank you for saying that. I don't know if I said this, but the smooth side of the paper is going down onto the plate. Okay, so when I pull now, I've got a big open silhouette of the eucalyptus. So when I lift this up, you can see that I've got a lot of great vein detail in there. So now I'm just going to put my print right back in and place, and I'm going to pick up that vein detail, and it's going to go into that open silhouette. So now when I lift this up, I've got some real interesting detail in the silhouette opening. And yes, again, we're using the smooth side of that paper because it does really grab all that fine detail on the plate. So a little water, a little paper towel. We're going to clean this off. And then we're going to go to the next color. And for the next color... I'm going to do the, we're going to call these the prickly things. 
<laughs> the pointy things. Okay. All right. So that'll be our next layer. And really, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just have to play with it. I always tell my students, the learning is in the doing. You have to practice with different colors and different greenery and different layers. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. I was making some pretty messy leaf prints, Barb, a, a little while ago. A couple months ago, I was making some, 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 a bit of a mess. One of the things that I think that's really interesting, and this would not have occurred to me, and when you were playing in the beginning, you humored me and created or put together a print with all opaque colors, and the effect was not nearly as stunning. So those, the translucency of the paint is important, and I can only advise that those of you who are watching to listen to what Elizabeth says about that, because it's going to make all the difference in the world. Yeah, the translucent paint, I, I talk about it like, it's like stained glass. You can see each layer through the next when you use translucent paint because it's like looking through stained glass. When you use opaque colors like a teal, that's going to block out everything underneath it. So you won't see that layering. And, and um, that, it's important to keep that in mind. If you're going to use a, a, um, an opaque paint, you have to do it carefully so that it doesn't block out all your previous layers. It's much like the way that I do the gel printing. So for uh, the gel printing for collage paper. So... Here again, I've gone real in there with my fingertips and gone around the stems to try to get a nice detailed print. I'm gonna pull that back and have a look, see if I need to add more pressure anywhere. And I can do that because the registration tool is keeping the paper in exactly the same place. And you can see that we're also getting a nice clean outline here because we keep putting the paper in exactly the same place. Now here I'm gonna lift and put that detail in. You know, I'm gonna- Look at that. I know, I'm gonna confess that when you pulled these colors out, and I know that you were looking at them from an opaque versus translucent standpoint, I kind of thought, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that really, I was a little bit unsure about the colors because I don't do brown as a matter of course, but it all works, especially when you get that Prussian blue, that last layer on there. Yeah, it's that's really stunning. Hopefully it'll be as stunning as it was last time. But yeah, no, the colors, um, gosh, sometimes you just have to, you have to play experiment. But um, yeah, this is a nice color palette, but Barb likes pink and purple, you know, so there's that. And you can do it with pink and purple. You just have to make sure you have the right tones and the right translucency. So here's the Prussian blue. So, okay, so, and then I'm gonna, again, I wanna make sure that I don't have any paint over because that's what's gonna create our nice clean white edge on this print. Oops, sorry, tried to hand it. I think we're good. <laughs> so, okay, and then we're gonna come in with the eucalyptus again. And I'm gonna put it over this side because I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room to leave this open. And I might actually even put a little bit more of that in here. It'll be on the same side as this particular leaf in the next layer. So you all, you really never know what you're going to get with this. I mean, it's really not a science, right? I mean, I just did it previously and I could have a better print this time than last time or vice versa. That's what's kind of cool about gel printing, I guess, and art in general is that, you know, there's always so many variables. And, and I have to be honest and tell you, like I said, when I first started messing with this, I was just making a mess, but I knew that I, I would get it eventually. So, so just, you know, give yourself permission to play and permission to make mistakes and some lousy prints until you get the hang of it. Don't give up. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Oh, it is a good color combo, Barb. It is, it is. Yeah, it is. It really is. So I got to get a little more pressure in here so I can get a little bit of a more crisp print. Look at that. That's oh goodness. my goodness. Right? You need to show them this one too, the one that you did. Yes. Do oh my goodness, look at that. So now I have to decide how much, what, what kind of vein detail do I want to go back and put in. So I'm going to put the eucalyptus in there because that's a lot of big, open, flat shapes. So I'm going to put that in there. 
Oh, uh, look at that. That's pretty and amazing. And I think I could put it in here as well. Um, this one is a, you can leave it bold like that, or let's pick it up and see what happens. So we'll put that, we'll line that right up into that print. Oh yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. And then we're just going to take it off the hinge. This paint, the, this painter's tape is perfect. And we have, look at that, beautiful lined up perfect edges and i managed to keep it clean barb i didn't get I'm i didn't get impressed. any mess out here so we've got the print perfect registration tool and did its job did its job and the previous print that i made in the same color palette is here so now i've got two prints frameable prints that create a series and when you keep using the same colors even if i use different leaves if i keep using those same colors now i've got harmony between the prints and I could put these in a series of two or three or four. Absolutely. So there you go. There you have it. Awesome. <laughs> Elizabeth has shown you how you can be incredibly perfect using our print perfect gel plate registration tool. And here are the prints that she made a little bit earlier. You can see she signed and dated them and numbered them because these are perfectly great for framing. I don't have that kind of perfection in me. It's just not how I work. So what I want to show you is how you can use the tool to align things and not care so much about the perfection. So one of the things that you'll notice as I turn this for you is that this, this is um, Elizabeth's, one of her original Klimt designs that's named Cubes. You'll notice that this is aligned right within the square that is the navy blue and on the ghost print it's a little harder to see because it's lighter but it's the same way now what you'll also notice is that there's this little bit of stuff going on around the edges because again I just can't spend the time it's not in my nature to scrub the edges of the plate and do all those things but I like the idea that I can get this alignment I can I don't have to worry about making certain that I align the paper carefully, I can just flip it over and you're going to see that in one second. So I'm going to use this paper because it works really well and it is what both of us prefer when we're gel printing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape on this end and then I'm going to tape another piece. So what I have found that works for me when I want to get this piece of paper kind of centered over the gel plate but you can't really see it is if I use the perimeter of the acrylic thingy as my guide, I can put this on there and I'm gonna grab some of the delicate tape and go ahead and put this on here. And I'm going to take a second piece of paper and I'm gonna kinda of line it up with the first one using the first one as a guide. I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm gonna tape it and I'm gonna tape it on this side. So ready to go here and I'm gonna pull this out of the way. Now, again, you're gonna notice that this plate, not super clean. I'm deliberately, I want to pick up the debris, all of those artifacts that accumulate over time, because I like that. So I'm gonna start with, this is a fresco finish paint named Peacoat. It's a nice dark blue, very much a navy blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and brayer that on there. And I'm using a six inch brayer, because even on an eight by 10 plate, it makes sense. It just covers more quickly. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel. I'm just gonna wipe up the excess here. So now this is gonna be my main sheet. I'm gonna come and I'm going to just go ahead and print this. And I'm gonna pull it back and I'm going, well, I can see that I missed right there. So that's the beauty, beauty of this. I can come back and I know that's gonna be aligned perfectly and there's job done. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pick up this ghost print and ideally I'd like to clean as much off of the plate as possible. Okay. So there's what's going on. We've got that piece, and I'm just gonna stretch this out of the way using the paint as a hinge and get it out of the way. Now I'm gonna use two colors of Finna Bear Sparks paint. This is Fairy Wings, and this is Butterfly Spells. And I'm gonna create an ombre. So you can certainly use this tool, the acrylic thingy, as we euphemistically call it, for the precise kinds of things and making those gorgeous botanical prints like Elizabeth did. Well, what is that? Or you can use it for your everyday printing. It really is that simple. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay mirror mirror in here and I'm going to use 
the ghost print and I'm going to use that to pick up the paint between all of the designs in that mask. And as Elizabeth always says, you have to use your fingers and you got to kind of press down in there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's take the stencil up, oops, get rid of it. And then I'm going to come back and print this. And as I pick this up, oh, how pretty is that? You can see that I've got, and I'm just going to pull this off. You can see I've got all the kinds of debris things that would normally happen when I create a print on a plate that's not perfectly clean. I have alignment set up just the way that I wanted it. So whether you use this tool, the acrylic thingy, to go ahead and create those lovely botanical prints like Elizabeth did, or you just use them for everyday prints, it is a very useful thing to have.